Peggy 16. One of the main features of the game is, of course, the power of Max. She is able to rewind time. We knew we wanted to do something with the rewind mechanic that we had explored in Remember Me, and we started thinking of, of what can it mean in, in another context, and we started to bounce ideas around. Very soon, this idea of choice and consequence and being able to rewind them uh, came about. You know, what does choice mean when uh, you're able to to rewind through them. We really wanted to have the player feel powerful also with this power and to really uh, feel that he can change uh, the scenes and uh, come back in time. The game could exist without the rewind. It could be an adventure classic adventure game. Really interesting, I think, that the, this new layer uh, allows the player to have a, a different experience, be able to see the direct consequence of a different choice. You could be happy with the outcome of the, the first episode, how it ends, and regret maybe later the, your choices and, and wish you had to do something different. The player will want to have uh, several walkthroughs to make sure they have they see uh, all the outcomes. When you're dealing with some time travel, you need to define clear rules in order to be sure that it's it's working within the frame of your story of your game. And also we needed to create those rules to have some really fun uses with, with puzzles and, and mechanisms for the player. Chloe, you're stalling. I'm changing. Give me a minute. Just don't let me in. Now. Please. One second. I'm changing. Give me a minute. Please. One second, my bra is stuck. I'm not screwing around, soldier. Chloe, open this door. So the idea is when Max is rewinding, she's keeping every every knowledge she, she has. Like in, a bit like in the movie Groundhog Day, when I just spoke to you, I rewind, I remember everything you told me and I can use it again when talking to you. Max is also keeping everything in, in, her, in her inventory. Like she, if she puts an, an item in her bag, she's keeping it with, with it. So I can, I can grab something, go back with it, just rewind, and I still have the item even, even if I rewind it back in time. This kind of rules, uh, we use it a lot for puzzles and also to tell something about also the characters. Even in a dialogue puzzles, you will have some information, but those information will be related to the character. And we've made a lot of tests uh, about the rewind and uh, should uh, Max keep those uh, information, should Max keep those items, should Max be um, rewinded herself by uh, when she rewind. We have made a lot of tests about this and we finalized those rules. It allows us to have very interesting puzzles and uh, very also funny situations uh, in the game with those rules. Max is not moving when she rewinds. This is also uh, for the player something much more powerful to be in a scene, to rewind the scene and to see all rewinded instead of being rewinded. Of course, we, we keep this rule since the beginning, nearly the beginning. The, the guys in the beginning were saying perhaps it could be better not to have it in the game, but we insist and we find the proper solution. And also for the artistic style, it's great. It's so crazy to see it. And uh, Max also, from the beginning, and what she is now, she is now is um, amazing. The work they have done is, um, I'm just happy. Yeah, it was my little input and they have done something great, so it's magic. It's all about finding solutions to problems. Because, you know, when you design a mechanic, it never works in the first time. So even though it might sound cool, like the rewind uh, gameplay, it's only when you put it in the game and you test it, and then you find uh, that it's flawed, that you can iterate again on it. And that's, that's really cool uh, to improve stuff that we designed before. The rewind power is uh, giving nightmares to developers and to level designers. But at the end, it's a very powerful tool for Max and also, of course, for the player. I remember a lot of uh, design discussions the guys had, very complex dis discussions about the impact of the, the rewind. Uh, uh, what you what you can do, what you cannot do, uh, how the player will uh, understand the rewind, and 
yeah, it's it's a challenge because it uh, as this is something that doesn't exist. It's science, science fiction. You have to to make it consistent. At first, when I started production, uh, the scope of the game was pretty small, and we were like only two or three designers on the team. And um, by the time when time passed on, we were like ten designers, and we cranked really the quality of the game. For the player, using this power is really something unique because you can rewind all a scene, so all the animation of a scene, all the particles, all the effects uh, on the scene, all the sounds of the scene. Can you give me an example of a Man, photographer I cannot who believe this. captured the human condition in black and white? Okay, if I'm crazy, Anybody? I might as well go all the way. Bueller? Can I actually reverse time? Since Max is a photographer and the, the visual of the game is are linked to this photographic feeling and, and also nostalgic feeling. For the rewind effect, we developed some, some new, some new post-processes and new visual effects looking like the film is burning when you reach the, the, the limit of, of, of your power when, when Max is getting some headaches because she, she cannot rewind further in time. Or when, when she's rewinding, we have this double exposure um, feeling like two, two different times are are overlapping or framing at the same moment. So we are using all, all those visual effects to give a nice feeling with the rewind to really show the player that is going back in time and, and to be something quite rewarding and, and really cool to, to look at when you're, when you're rewinding. The camera burn effect is, uh, is present and uh, there is an overlay of uh, light, light leaks like in a, in a broken camera and it presents a twirl effect. Uh, as if the celluloid, the film, is uh, it twisted away before burning. We add on top of that a layer of burning, and uh, this is achieved by using uh, screen space particles that uh, overlaps. During this effect, Max is rendered as a blurred ghost, and the blurred effect is composited on top of the scene, but slightly offset, like uh, it was a, a composition of uh, photography. What we want to achieve is to see a reminiscence of Max. It's not the actual Max, but uh, to, um, to over, over print uh, a ghost of uh, what she has done previously. It's still a, a story of a character with, with a rewind power, so there is this, this story arc that is quite sci-fi, but there is also all those, all those elements of, of real life that we wanted to deal with, and that was the game is called Life is Strange. It's also something that's really important for us to, 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 to talk about those real characters and real issues with, uh, that some of our players might have experienced themselves already. Seeing people play the game will be the, the best reward. We've made some playtests, we've seen people giving us their feedbacks and as, as soon as you see someone doing a specific thing that's a part of the gameplay that's not mandatory, you see people explore, people enjoying small stuff, smiling, having fun, it's uh, the best thing you can have. Life is not always so easy, something, life is strange, and so you have to grow, and I think uh, the game will help people grow, and I think it will help also video game to grow in a way, it's perhaps pretentious, but we want to bring the independent video game to our industry, and I think there is a huge place for it, and I think it will be very successful, thanks to Square Enix, who are the first to believe in the project.